What's going on, YouTube? How's all the beautiful people? Well, looky here. This is a 2018 model FR691V Kawasaki V Twin. Um, this is previously one that we previously did head gaskets on, and anyways, burn it on. So, I've got all the parts I need to re ring it and. Um, new again, new head gaskets, uh, only rings, uh, crank seals. So it runs, it runs and runs pretty good. It just smokes. So um, I have a feeling once we get new rings put in it and get the oil burning portion of it resolved, it's going to run like new. So let's uh, let me get some layers peeled off of it, and I will bring you back. Uh, currently still waiting on parts for this um, this is going to be the same a rebuild so anyway um, let me get some stuff out of the way and we'll get started I've already drained the oil so we're good there all right well I've got the layers peeled back I've got all but one bolt out of that head all but one out of that head and I've got every bolt in the sump loose uh, governor rod is off. What I'll do now is I'll just set you guys up. Let you watch a little time lapse as I pull, pull the heads and uh, set them in the parts washer, and then we will pull the sump. And maybe if I have to do some cleaning on the pistons beforehand, because um, but really I can do that after the fact. So let me just set you up, and we'll go from there. Well, well, well. Look at all that. And after I did the head gaskets and it was still smoking and being a shithead, I did dump a bottle of uh, Restore in here. To see if it made any kind of a difference it did not so a lot of that copper stuff that you're seeing over there that is the restore um, um, yeah the only thing to do now is just to get that camshaft pulled out of the way and uh, that sump cover will go out to the parts washer and uh, I'll get it all gussied up and prettied up. But as you can see, it did not have much runtime since I did the head gaskets on it. And so, but this time, while it is out, my plan is to pull the valves, um, give them a proper cleaning. It's a lot easier to do uh, right here, but no sense in me going through all that trouble with the engine if I'm not going to do this right so I'll get these um, I'll take all the valves out get them cleaned up get them lapped I didn't lap them last time just out of curiosity we did replace the seals but we did not lap so that's where I'm at with this I'll set you guys back up and let you do a little watch a little time lapse while I get this stuff pulled out of here and then uh I'll bring you back. I'm going to uh, go ahead and take this out there in the parts washer and fill her up with diesel and just let her soak a bit. Okay, it's a couple of hours later. Um, 
little update. Everything has been cleaned. We got a little diesel yet to get out of that, but nice and shiny. I pulled the rings off of piston one. Um, yeah, pulled the rings off the piston one. And I thought, well, I'll check the ring gap. Look at that. OMG. That's a lot. That is a lot. So I'm quite confident that's where uh, all the oil is getting in the chamber. So, anyways, I think I'm going to call it a day. But uh, I just wanted to show the update. I did do some honing. You can see there's one groove right there at the bottom that you can barely feel uh, but I'm gonna leave it I'm not I'm not gonna hunt anymore um, this one over here didn't have any grooves you can see down there where the piston stops and kind of you know the crankshaft or the rod and everything kind of turns around and comes back the other way you can see where there's a little wear there that didn't get hung but I'm not gonna worry about it um, but that ring gap is horrendous uh, let me pop the other one in there real quick and I'll bring it up there. Yeah, that one's even worse. Look at that. Oh my gosh. That is terrible. So, I have a pretty good feeling about uh, the rings solving the problem. May not completely solve it, but uh, I'll go a long ways towards uh, fixing it. So, I will catch you guys tomorrow. I'm done for the day. Alright, I just, just out of curiosity, I slid one of the new ones in. And look at that. Maybe, oh, uh, maybe seven, eight thousandths. Maybe ten. I don't know. Got to wonder now. Hang on, let me get my feeler gauge. Okay, I'm back. Um, top groove. Max clearance is 24 thou. And that is a perfect fit right there. And that. Uh, is 12. Damn, I can't see nothing, can you? There you go, 12 thou. So, I am half of what I'm allowed, so. I'm happy with it. Just means the old cylinder ain't too wore out. So, alrighty, I'm done now. We'll see you tomorrow. Well, welcome back, boys and girls. Um, new day, obviously. Um, I've already got number one in. Um, I've already put the new rings on number two. Uh, they're pretty self-explanatory when you get them. At least the genuine Kawasaki rings are. Uh, you'll have one that says 1R, one that says 2R, and then you'll have the wiper, which is, you got the, the wiper ring in the middle, and then you've got the two, uh, the two small rings, real thin rings that go on top and bottom of the wiper ring. What you what you want to do is put your wiper on first. You want to make sure that it's not overlapping. You do not want the ends to overlap. Then you put your small one on bottom, small one on top. You put the two R on in the middle and the one R on in the top, and you want the wording facing up. And as far as the gap configuration, um, you just want to stagger them. You don't want them... Uh, you obviously don't want them lined up, but I'm going to stagger mine roughly, I don't know. These two here are going to be, I don't know, roughly 100 degrees apart or so. So, um, and then as far as the oil rings go down here, and you just, just stagger them. Uh, these things are going to move a little bit, regardless of where you put them. They're going to, they're going to do their thing. So you just don't want them lined up. Um, like always, use this lube plate, engine assembly lube. One 
everything clean, you want everything lubed, when you put it together, you can use two-stroke oil, you can use engine oil doing this. I like using assembly lube because it tends to stay longer until that oil gets to flowing good, so that's why I do it. Get it all good and lubed up. Doesn't hurt to put a little bit in here. And just and I did some more honing, not a ton, but a little bit. Okay. Last but not least, right here on the bearing. And I'll put some on the cap as well once I uh, get I get ready to put it on. Um, these are marked. This is top. Be flywheel side. So, oh, hang on. Hang on. Got the compression tool. Guess I should have done this before I turn the camera on. Let me back this up a little bit. These things can be kind of tricky, but once you get them figured out, it ain't terrible. Make sure you're big enough. And you're not looking to make this thing real tight. You just want to, well, I'll tell you this, you can't really get it too tight. Unless you put a cheater on it, I guess. But I can't imagine anybody doing that. And you don't have to cover the whole piston, you just want to cover the ring. Right there. That's the last click she's going to give me. sure that your compression tool is flat against the head and what you want to do here is rotate your crank around to make sure that your rod is going to line up for you. this down again a little bit that way and you don't want to you don't need a big hammer to do this just but when you do it you do want to hold down on this because those rings they will pop this thing out of place and then you got a bit of a jam kind of keep an eye make sure everything is going your way on the crank and be patient sometimes it takes a couple of a couple tries a little bit of oh, right on there okay we're good I was already down all the way well now what you want to do is put this in a position where you can you can work and I'm going to push down on the piston 
and rotate the crank just like that. And I'm gonna take my bearing. You wanna make sure you get this on right too. The uh, number one, it was a flat side and a bevel side. Number one, the bevel goes towards the flywheel. On number two, the bevel goes towards the PTO side, the, the clutch. Um, pretty simple. I like to clean my clean my hardware off with some carbon choke cleaner. I don't want any oil in there that's going to skew my torque. So. Captain Blue. Get that started. And I did off camera. I mean, there's nothing. Nothing really to show in doing it, but I did put my valves in a drill and used a bench grinder, got all the carbon off of them. Um, I still have to lap them, but we're going to do all that. I just wanted to get get this thing buttoned back up. That way that RTV can be doing its thing while I'm working on other crap. These don't use sump gaskets, they just use sealant, so... Hopefully, by the end of this video, we'll have this thing mounted back up. It should be running like a new one. And, if, you know, thinking back now, I wish I'd have went ahead and got pistons and just put new pistons in it. But, I've got several other engines that will bolt right up to this thing and uh, with a little bit of wiring harness mods, maybe, but uh, this is, I think this will fix us up for years to come, so, uh, I'll tell you what, let me make a little room here, and we'll lay this, well, let's just rotate it over a turn. Oh, hang on, let me put a little bit of a little bit more of this lube in here and I don't want a bunch of this lube in there whenever I get ready to start fire it up not up here anyway where it's gonna have to burn but I'll wipe all that off before I put them heads on Everything turns freely. I'm liking it. That's good enough for me. So, let me put this thing on its back. Should have got this thing in a better spot before I set it down. One thing's for sure, with that end play like that, these things don't rotate very well when they're on the back. I'm just going to put it just like that, and then I should be able to torque them both. Pretty sure he's torqued to about 70 inch pounds, but I'll I'll do a little bit of research, make sure I'm correct on that, and then I'll bring y'all back. 
Alrighty. Well, I was close. It was 7.3 foot pounds, which comes out to 87 inch pounds. So, did I say that right? 7.3 foot pounds, which comes out to 87 inch pounds. Yeah. So, that's what we're going to do. Now, I'm not going to go balls out on right off the bat. I'm going to jump back and forth. Make sure we're. I don't think it would hurt if a guy just went balls out, but I'm not going to do that. And I do believe I'm set on 80. Tell you what, this doesn't have a lock on 87. It goes 86 to 88, so I'm going to... Oh, yeah, 88. I'll do 88. Not that one inch pound would make a difference, but I'd rather be on the heavy side of it than the light side. All right, that's got number two. Let's get number one. Get off there. Mm -hmm. I guess I can't get it off. Come on, man. You can do that to me. I'm rotate it a bit if it's like me. Oh, no. I won't. What a pain. Hmm. Ass. Now maybe. Whoop, whoop. Nice. Oh, there it is. Don't seem like much. Whatever. They know better than I do. Okay, let's go with that. Um, next is get all these little lifters in place. We'll get them all cleaned up real quick and then I'll label and we will slide them in their hole. Now I still, once I get everything done here with the block, I still need to pull the oil pump cover off and make sure all of the schmoo, I'm pretty sure it's clean but I want to know for sure that it is. So. I'm not going to worry about lubing that just yet. I will. Well, hang on here. Huh? You just want to get them good and lubed up. And the bottom ones may require some assistance from a pair of needle nose. Especially with this lube on there. Let me get a pair real quick. Hang on. I know your camera angle is not the best for this, but it's quite self-explanatory once you get to this point. And it's, it's better to mark where these come out when you take them out and put them back in the same spot. Is it a big deal? Probably not, but... Is 
as I fail to get a mark, for sure. One. Well, this stuff goes a long way. For sure. Okay. It's got those. Next. And this is a perfect time. I spent a couple of hours getting this thing cleaned up. I mean, if you got it open. Why in the world would you want to leave any kind of debris in there? You know, so take the time to get it clean, and uh, the end result will be way better. Mine's got a mess of diesel on it. Now, and be careful with this spring. You want to make sure that the spring has to be there for your compression release set of weights under here and I know I'm not gonna be able to get all of the diesel off of this thing I mean I could but it's not that big of a deal because shortly after I fire it up you know I'm gonna change the oil again so I'll let it warm up and then I'm gonna change it again so like I said, there's no diesel setting in it anywhere, just some of these parts still have some on them. Just want to make sure that you get the lid down it. One thing on a, an engine is a dry start. And I'll probably leave the spark plug wires off and crank it over for 30 seconds or so. All right, now we're real close on our timing mark. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this down in there. Even though my marks aren't perfectly lined up, it's real easy to say, okay, I need to go one tooth this way or one tooth that way. And I'm only one tooth off, so, but I know right there that it's going to be spot on. Okay, I'll put a little dab of loo up here. And it is a good idea to go around here and pick off all of this old RTV that, that they've got on here. Um, and these little, and before I forget, go ahead and get some lube here, get some lube there. Last thing you want is this thing. Not having lube. So I'll go around that. You probably don't have to get that carried away with it, but you know, it's not going to hurt things. And my O rings, I've got them here. They were just a touch, uh, a little bit more smashed than I'd like. So I'm going to, I've got o-ring kits. I'm gonna see about just putting a couple of new ones in there. And if I can't find a couple that make me real happy, then I'll just reuse these because there's really nothing wrong with them. Just a little on the smash side. And maybe they're supposed to be that way, I don't know. Not a huge deal because we're gonna be going around these with that 
and sealant anyway. So, okay, I'm gonna grab a pick and I'm gonna clean these little grooves out right here. That way, when I apply my new sealant, uh, we don't have any of that crap in the way, and then I'll bring it all back. As we set the cover on, um, I still have to put my new seal in the cover yet, so um, I'll probably go ahead and knock that out too. It's pretty straightforward. Alrighty, I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, took the governor, the governor arm loose, pulled it back so that I could get the cover off the oil pump. And there is, yeah, right here, there's a pickup screen in here. You want to make sure that you get that cleaned out. Mine wasn't too bad, but uh, dang, sure want to get her clean. And that only goes in one way, so. And just so I got that. And then, I'm going to put some assembly lube on all of this. And I'll show you how to get this orientated so that assembly, when you put this cover on, goes better. Like that. And this only goes, this has to go this side out so that it can interact with the camshaft. There. That side up. I'm just using some of the assembly lube that's still on my fingers. Just like that. And if you are... And if you are in top dead center, which... I may still need to rotate just a smidge. This will go right into place without fail. Uh, you got your little spring and your, your check ball there. That's what controls your oil pressure. There's no gasket or anything. You just want to clean this up good. and Put a little lube on here as well to finish it off. And I believe the torque on these is about the same. I'm just gonna ugga dugga mine on so that I know they don't fall off. I mean, when I say the same, I'm talking about the connecting rod bolts, so. And that's just an assumption. Don't quote me on that. So, let me get my, my torque wrench. like that. Next, um, we'll put a little lube. Go ahead and jerk this out and wipe it. Any remaining diesel off of it. Kind of lessen the chances of oil contamination. Put a little lube on that. Be careful because there is a seal there. Just like that. Next, I'm going to wipe this little guy down. I 
to think for a second. Those, make sure you put this on the right way. You can see where the screws were contacting it, but that little arm gets pushed on right here by this little thrust, uh, thrust washer. assembly lube all over my hands. It wasn't working too good for me. Uh -oh. I've been meaning to I'm gonna have to clean some of this off. I've been meaning to get this thing rebuilt for a few months now. I just had other things are going on. Got plenty of mowers to mow with, so we didn't. Okay. Well, I'm gonna stop right there as far as the filming goes. Um, unless you guys want to see the seal replacement, and, and I guess we can gonna make for a fairly long video, but it is what it is. Let me get a few things gathered up. We'll pop this old seal out. It was not leaking, but while I've got it apart, I've got a new one. I'm just going to replace it. Let me get some stuff gathered up. Okay, let's see what we can accomplish here. Sometimes these things come out with ease and others. What I don't like about what's happening here is when I'm prying... On one side, it's pushing the other. I'm not a fan of that. I wish that was a bit longer. Hmm. Let <laughs> me get a longer screwdriver. I just knew that was going to work for me. And it still may be what I end up going with, but this method here at least. <clears throat> really wasn't wanting to have to pound it out, but that may. not a fan of swinging on the aluminum stuff. Let me find my uh, longer brass pump. Brass is going to save the day, but better than steel. Get this off the edge just a touch so that. Yeah, that wasn't bad. That wasn't bad at all. Okay, there's the old one. And when you drive these out, you want to take note of where it was at. This one, 
and appears to have been all the way up against this lip. So you just want to make sure you note that so that you can get the new one set at the right level. Oh, here's the new one. Looks just like it. Take a little bit of this lube. Don't need much. Just to assist. And I will, when I get ready to slide this cover on, I will damn near feel that little groove in there up with some assembly lube or some grease or something to. Something to help seal. Worst thing is putting one of these together and getting it on, get it bolted up, and the crap goes to leaking on you. That's pretty aggravating. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to find me a good side of this board. Kind of dance around it here a little bit. started good and then I'm going to take this here inch and three quarter socket This one right, right here, we're down all the way, so we're going to concentrate over there. And I'm going to stop right there. Some of these engines, um, if you go too far, and you guys won't be able to see in there, but if you was to go too far, I, being as there's a lip in there, that, that'll keep you from going too far, but... Some of them, it is possible to drive that seal too far down, and there's return holes there. Um, if you block those holes, or I, I, should, I say return holes, but if you were to block those holes, then your oil pump, you see, you can see right here, um, the oil will not get to the pump, so just something to be mindful of. But we are very clear, very clear all the way around. Yeah, we are good to go. But you can see what I'm talking about. So, love it. Okay, uh, I'm going to save you guys the boredom of me putting the sealant on this. Uh, I'll pause it here. I will bring you back whenever we get ready to set it on. You know, I still gotta try to find some new O-rings yet. Okay, as you can see, I've got my sealant on there, right? Um, new seal, new sealant, new O-rings. Um, I did get my uh, timing marks perfect. Uh, one more tip um, to anybody that's doing this, Try to put this sump on with it laying on its back. Your gears will not be correct. They won't be uh, lined up. They won't be flush with each other like they are now. And you won't get it on. Um, you'll think you've got something messed up. But in reality, the only thing that's messed up is just the end play of the crank. So we are going to operate with it on its... And I've kind of got it elevated a little bit to keep this gasket material, this RTV from getting knocked off. I'm going to try to shove some of this. Assembly lube in the groove on this seal. Oh yeah. Yeah, 
this way like that. I wish I'd have used, uh, I've got some black RTV, but um, I had just a smidge left. What I'm doing here is just making sure, or trying to anyway. I think now, yeah, it's the seal that's got us held up. So I've got some dental tools, a, a dental tool kit. What I'm gonna do is just attempt to go around the seal. You don't want it to curl. making sure everything that goes inside is there and I'm certain it is. Tap that baby home just like that. Okay. And we are closed up aside from the uh, RTV. So at this point oh, I've knocked over my I'll cover it out of the way. Now we sunk bolts. And what I would normally do is if the sump had a gasket. I just run these down there. I wouldn't tighten them at all, but run them down and and leave it that way for I don't know an hour or so. But since this this engine is designed uh, to not use a sump gasket, what I'm going to do is go ahead and just run them up and torque them. Um, I'm going to run them in with an impact and then I'll torque them. Because I don't want to increase that end play, I don't want any of the clearances to be off because I let this uh, gasket material kind of tack up a little bit. So, well, I'm wearing my all these towels, unless, Pretty sure it's a twelve. I must have put it up. No, I did not put it up. Lovely. That means it's over here. Where are you at, girl? I know I saw it now that I think about it. Oh, there it is. Just got too much shit in my way. Silicone. That's 
like it. And now I'll get my torque wrench and uh, I'll get these all torqued up. Not going to bore you guys with that. And then we will move on to getting the valves lapped, getting our heads reassembled, and putting them on. So I'll bring you back. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the valves lapped. It's a pretty quick process. Here I have cylinder head number two. Got my clean valves. Put a little compound on it. A little goes a long ways. Probably enough to do all four of them. No oh, well. Exhaust side, this is an intake valve. Slide it in the intake holio. Push it in. Suffice. Get the drill off of it. And we'll have a gander. Like I said, this thing was running good. It just smoked. Um, I don't really think this part is necessary, but there again, you know, just like the. Look at that. That's beautiful. Just like the uh, uh, seal, you know, wasn't leaking, but while we're here, I like it. I'll set that one down. And um, as I've stated before in many of videos, when you lap valves, you always want to make sure that you clean, 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 clean. Get all of that lapping compound out of there. If not, they'll just... The valves will just beat themselves to death. and You'll have troubles. Nobody wants troubles. turn you guys off while I get the other ones knocked out. Hopefully. That's not in my way. I don't think it will be. You got to be careful because you don't want any of that compound on the stem to where it can get in there and, and you go to grinding on the uh, valve guide. You don't want that, so just be mindful. 
You just want it there on the ceiling surface of the valve. That is it. Look at that. Beautiful. Beautiful. Love it. Okay. Now we flip this thing over. We'll give these a little wipe down and we'll have a gander at them. And I'll squirt these things out real good with the... Uh, I may even put them in the parts washer. I probably will. That way I can make sure all that crap is out of there. You guys probably can't tell a whole hell of a lot in the video, but anyways, they're good to go, so. Okay, I'll uh, get the other one done, get them cleaned up, and then I'll uh, bring you back when we get ready to put these heads on. I'll show you one of those, and then we're getting closer. Getting way closer. Welcome back, boys. Okay. We are getting close. Um, I discovered something when I opened up the box of gaskets, or the package of gaskets I had ordered for this. Look at this. Not that pathetic shit. Hmm. I don't know if uh, it would be better off just to reuse the ones that were on us since they were not very old, but... I'll bring you back when that compressor cuts off. Alright. Peace and quiet. I think I'm just going to go with it. Um, the old gaskets are obviously smashed. There's nothing. I mean, that's two of them together. They are, they're zero ridge, so. I think we'll be fine. I'm just not going to sleep very good about it. So, I have number one. I've got both of these cleaned up in the parts washer right. so this part's pretty straightforward get your alignment dials to be missing a bolt. Borrow one from that side. Paying attention, was I? That one needs to be a short bolt. That one. Let me tell you, tell you what. Let's see here. Yeah. We'll do the same. And that one's short. Let 
this one here. That one's correct. Oh my goodness. Okay, um, I gotta torque these yet. Uh, these torque to 34 foot pounds. So let me get the other side to this point. You get them both torqued, and then we will do uh, rockers. Oh, that's a dumbass. How many y'all caught that? Huh? Y'all catch that? I gotta take this back off. I had a couple of phone calls and we got sidetracked a while ago, but I gotta take this bag off and put our vibes in. I'm an idiot. I'll be back. Okay, we are on the home stretch. I hope. Um, I got the, t the heads torqued down. I've got the rockers installed, push rods installed. I'm going to go through it with you here real quick on this side. Specs call for four to six on both. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna split the hairs and we're gonna go with five. Um, currently have it positioned to where the exhaust valve is open. So we'll closed on the intake. And the way these work, they're a little bit different than a lot. Um, this little bolt right here is just on a cam, basically. So you just rotate that bolt till you get the clearance you want. And that right there feels great. Hold that bolt where you want it. You run that jam nut down. And all that jam nut does is keep that bolt from turning. We're good there. So, now as long as that bolt doesn't turn, and it shouldn't, all you're going to do is snug up this jam nut, like so, boom, perfect. So now I'll rotate it around until we get the exhaust closed and the intake open, like that, and do the same. He's on the loose side. We'll take our 10 mil. Rotate the cam bolt. Till we get where we want. And that right there feels pretty good. I like it. Make sure our jam nut is fairly close to being tight. Right in there. Snug up that jam nut. Check it. Perfect. So, while I'm here, let's see, this is cylinder one. So, let me go ahead and just do this number. I'm not going to use any sealant. These have already been cleaned up. The gasket was good on this one, so I'm going to leave it alone. The gasket on the other one, however, was not so it's going to get a new gasket and then there is a torque i torque spec on these but i'm not going to worry about it on these i'm just going to 
Turn them down and tighten them up a bit. And call it quits. I can find that 10 millimeter. I don't know what you, there it is. I don't get carried away. The thing about it is, if you don't go too tight right off the bat, you can always go back and snug it up a bit if it leaves, all right? And I don't think it's gonna leak. It wasn't leaking before, so. Okay, I'm gonna do that side. Um, I don't think you guys need to see anything else. I'll get that side done, and I think the next time you see this, um, it'll be fully assembled and ready to go in, if not already in, so. Okay. Alrighty, well, there it is. She's complete. Um, the only thing I did not put back in is the spark plugs because I want to crank it over. Um, I want to turn it over for a little bit and let that oil pressure, let that pump pump some oil in, and then uh, we'll go for it. So all I've got left to do is put this thing on, get it all bolted up, hooked up, and I'll bring you back and we'll see what happens. Okay, please excuse the lighting. Um, I'm going to, spark plugs are still out, they're right there. I'm gonna crank it over. Oh, hang on, gotta have out the levers. Okay, the oil pump should have pumped what it was going to pump. Hopefully. So I'll pause you, I'll put the plugs in real quick, and I'll bring you back and we'll fire it up. Okay, here we are. Um, I did have to put the belt back on the deck belt, I forgot. Uh, anyways, I did fill it with oil, I failed to mention that. I just filled it to the full mark, which got a, a new filter on it, so it's gonna have to be topped off. But anywho, she's got plenty to start, I know that. I'm gonna start it, let it run for about 30 seconds, and we'll shut it off, and uh, well, depend on what it does there's a chance that governor may just run wild with us um, the way those governors are set up there's really we just taking the arm off and putting back on doesn't adjust the the governor at all but you know when things are taken apart now here we go choke cross your fingers put down in the comments what you think is going to happen i'm waiting i'm ready here we go uh, freaking safety. Maybe no choke. on and then I'm going to tap on that solenoid a little bit just in case here we go choke off maybe it needs a little throttle the fuel line situation and I'll bring you right back okay I believe that's all she was Choke.
burning off burning off some of that shit yeah there was a good bit of oil in that exhaust uh, you know what i mean um yeah i'm gonna top it off with oil continue running it but it sounds a hundred times better than it did and you can tell that smell that's just a remnants full remnant smell that's burning off right there it's not not the engine so um i will bring you back with any updates but other than that i do believe this hustler lives to mow again and i do have to put the bumper back on but other than that like and sub you beautiful people and uh, we'll catch you on the next one i'll update you if there's anything to update on